I'd like to just come back to this notion that you talked primarily with managers and business people from the real world, not primarily with other academics during that time. And just to set the stage for this a little bit, uh, a year ago, I was asked to join a lunch of the Sloan Fellows class of 1960. So the Sloan Fellows program is a uh, one-year degree program for mid-career high potential future leader executives. They all came from businesses. <laughs> and uh, although, of course, I was only five when they graduated from MIT, I knew many of them and their work through their system dynamics theses that they had done, including things like extending the model you just described to the minerals industry, the copper industry, to R&D and, and other, other areas of this sort. So uh, it would be interesting, I think, for everyone to hear a little bit about how you would work with those kinds of students in the classes at MIT and also with businesses. Well, the it was a two-year program, and they all did master theses in the second year. And system dynamics was really launched on the basis of those theses, and you'll find them, you'll find them footnoted and somewhat mentioned in the industrial dynamics book. And each of them were from a company where there was some kind of problem. And so, would begin to work on it and put together their ideas of what the structure was, what was going on, entirely out of their own experience, building models that turned out to be very insightful. The interesting thing is that they would, they would go through this, they would build the model, and they would end up saying, I had no idea I knew so much about my company. Because you had pulled out all the corners of knowledge that they had, brought it out into the the open in the model, and you found that there was quite sufficient information in their heads to do a good job of modeling. And a lot of people in system dynamics don't re realize or even accept that yet. The mental database is tremendously powerful and has millions of times more information in it than you'll find in any book or data series. And unless one uses that database, you're missing what makes the world run. Because the world does not run on the data series. It does not run on what you read in the books and newspapers. It runs on what's in people's heads. And you've got to be willing to model from that. You use the, you use the other things whenever you can and whenever they're relevant. But the big story is the knowledge people have of the structure, the relationships, the information flows. The knowledge of the pieces is very good. The knowledge of what they mean in dynamics is very bad. And that's where the simulation goes hand in hand with the mental model. And people ask, how do you prove the model is right? Well, there is no conceptual possibility of proving that a model is right if the model represents the real world. There's no proof of Einstein's law of relativity. There's no proof of any of the laws in physics. It is only that they work within a certain territory. And uh, that's the way with the model. And, the, and we have to keep in mind that the competition for a system dynamics model is the model in people's heads. And if you can't do better than that, then you're not doing very much. But it's very easy to do. I would say it's much easier to, I can be quite sure of making an economic model of what's going on in this country that's better than the model in the heads of a congressman.